Hey folks, so tonight I got something uh, not necessarily new, but at least new to me. I got uh, one of those Midwest Embedded uh, Game Boy Color Backlight kits. Now, this is not a new kit. This actually was one of the first in the uh, new wave of backlight kits. Uh, that is to say, um, not, not the first kit itself. Uh, that would have been like the AGS-101 screen. Um, Uh-oh. Looks like I got two, actually. Um, so what this is, this is... I guess those are the instructions it comes with. Uh, how this works is you've got to solder three wires on here uh, to the D-pad and to select button or start button or however the heck you want to do it. This is for the brightness control. And then there are another two wires here, I believe for power. Yeah, because one of these goes to ground and the other it looks like it goes to the uh, power switch. Uh, but anyway, we'll come back to that. This kit is kind of cool because it does something um, that none of the other kits like it do. Let me pop it out here. And I'll show you what I mean. So unlike the other uh, backlight kits that use this LCD, this one's different because it has this uh, black painted frame around it because the LCD itself is uh, located within the screen bezel. You have to, you have to cut this out. Um, but I'm sorry, I'm, I'm doing a freaking god awful job of talking about this thing. What's cool and unique about this one is when this one came out, it was the only one with brightness control. Yeah, it was still using the same screen as the McWill and Ben Ben's Freckle Shack, but if you wanted brightness control, this was your only option. Um, I've heard really good things about it in pretty much every way, uh, except that it is a little bit thirsty on battery life. Uh, but let's try it out, see what happens, huh? So it looks like it comes with this uh, epoxy magnet enamel wire. Um, I don't know that I'm going to use this. Not that there's anything in, wrong with this in particular. I just I don't really like working with it. And uh, I have some other stuff. Um, unfortunately, I'm getting pretty low on Game Boy Color donors. I have made some more orders, but I generally order from Japan and that kind of takes a while. So. I'm going to break into my reserves here, and we're going to go ahead and modify this Game Boy here. Uh, it's not quite the Game Boy I wanted to modify, but it'll do. I think we can, I think we can work around that. All right, so let's go ahead and get this apart. Just like any other Game Boy Color, there are just six tri-point screws around the periphery. Bear with me here. Oh, you know what? I should grab a test cart that's not a flash cart. That would make sense, huh? Ah, I do have one. Okay. I have no idea what ROM is on it, but... Well, it is still a flash cart. Oh, wait, no. That's my Super Mario Land palette hack. that literally only works on unpatched DMG IPS games. Okay. So that just pops off there like that. Set that aside so I don't lose it later. Power switch, IR window. All right, let's, uh, where's my power supply? Man, I am on a roll tonight. Sorry for being so wholly unprepared for this. Uh, I have literally never lost this thing before tonight. That's a bit high. Two point four. There we go. Spot on. Let's kill that light. Yeah. All right.
So like usual, I'm going to go ahead and run this before installing the kit so we can get a baseline. And uh, that way we have something to compare it to, something meaningful. So at 2.38 volts. Oh good, he found something else. So in the overworld here, we'll wait till that's done saving. Just so I don't have to keep running out every time I boot this up. Uh, we're pulling about 77, 78 milliamps. It's reasonable, ain't too bad. Let's get started, shall we? Let's set that aside, all right. So now we've got Three more screws. This time these are JIS screws, not Phillips. I swear he's doing everything in his power to be a handful tonight. Okay. But you got your three JIS screws out. You can release the bale, pull the motherboard out. We'll set this aside. Use it in a bit. Now this screen is going to be held down with a double-sided sticky gasket. Easiest way to get it out is just twist the screen. It usually pops out, but it looks like it's a, a little bit loose already. Uh, pull that up. And wow, it's really loose. How bizarre. But we're just going to pull this out because we won't be using it with this new screen mod. Set that aside and save it for someone, something else, or just toss it or do whatever the hell you want with it. I'm actually, in hindsight, going to stick it on this screen. Save the screen for something. There we go. All right. So now, let's, uh, oh, we gotta solder this before we can try it out. That goes like that. And let's see. I'm going to use my 30 gauge Kynar wire because it's a little bit easier to work with here. And this wire actually does not need to be that long. And I'll show you a trick. So we're going to go ahead and wire up brightness control since we got to do some soldering anyway. But instead of... Set that there. So instead of, uh, I think that's the ground, is that the ground? Yeah. So instead of soldering to this test pin right here, PO2, you can solder to one of these vias up here. And it looks like up is that one right there. I think that'll look a little bit cleaner and it'll make the wiring a little bit easier we won't have wires running under the uh, silicone membrane for the buttons. Good lord, that cat. As soon as I say something, there he goes. Okay. up. So 
wire is actually a little bit on the long side. Okay. Next down, that's ground. Probably the one right next to it. No. It's that one that I already have solder on. How convenient. And I'll post a picture that uh, has all these pinouts already done. Okay. Let's make that a little bit shorter, shall we? I'm going to I'm going to fix that. This is too Nice. All right, and just double check I did those right. Up is up. Nice. Down is down. Double nice. All right, so now we want to do select, which I believe was P12. Yep. Which I think is actually on this side here. One of these. There it is. Okay. Where'd more? My problem, I can never remember which mod is which, so some of them are set to start, some of them are set to select, but I'll get over it. But really, that's my own damn fault. Because I could set whatever the heck I want. There's no reason you have to set these buttons to select up and down. You could do start A and B if you wanted. Be kind of weird, but I mean, hey, I don't judge much. There we go. Bit of a crusty joint, but I think it'll work. Yeah. All right. Next, we have VCC and ground. Actually, let me double check that that's right. Yep. Okay. 
So ground, I believe any of these vias should do. Yep. So any of these top ones right here, these are all go to ground. And VCC, I believe they want us to do that via. I got the instructions right here. So that is wired up to that one, VCC. Easy enough. That is the best one yet. Nice. One more. And this one's just ground. That's too short. Okay. So we should probably use a better ground, but eh, I'm sure it'll be fine. What's the worst that could possibly happen? I mean, it should all connect to the same thing anyway. Uh, I think I see why they don't just say to use one of these. I'm not having a lot of luck getting solder to wick. Oh, there we go. I got it to wick into that one. Why not that one? There it goes. Nice. All right. Now, let's, tar let's test power consumption, eh? So, whoo, that thing is making a noise. We are right at the power limit of my uh, meter here. All right, so in the overworld, 2.38 volts, 2.32, it's actually dropping. That can't be good. 372 milliamps. I'm not even gonna try and uh, adjust the brightness. I'm gonna whip out another meter. That is gnarly, man. So they weren't kidding about the power usage. So I don't normally use this one, 
just because I'm still not really happy with the design. I don't like showing off something that I can't tell people how to make. I also can't really see the screen on camera. But it does work, and the power envelope is much higher. On there. Oops. Accidentally touched the. Uh... Come on. Oh. Gotta bump the current up. This thing has current limiting on it. It's kind of nice. But for the most part, I don't really use it, so it doesn't really do much except get in the way. All right, so at the very least, we're in game with uh, minimal casualties. You can see it's pulling just about the same, 372 milliamps. Let's try bumping the brightness up, I think. There it goes. Oh, that is super cool. I didn't realize this kit did that. You see that red bar at the bottom? That's the brightness level. So at max, this thing is pulling 454 milliamps on high brightness. And if we jump it down to the minimum, I can find that, there it is. It's pulling 307, we'll call it. That's what it's jumping around to, 307 milliamps. And that's as low as it goes. It's not off. It is still on. I think some other kits... Or I might have... Hmm. I don't know. I thought one of the options was off, but I guess not. But there we go. It works. Let's see... Let's see if it drops frames. So it is kind of laggy, I think. A little bit weird. I'll have to get this thing together for a uh, full comparison and I'll put it side by side in another kit here. But uh, I will say it ain't perfect. I'll double check that it's not just crystal itself. I don't think crystal is, but we'll, we'll get there one step at a time here. I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick break, uh, let the camera cool down. Um, Jesus, there we go. And uh, we'll start on getting the shelf, getting this thing ready to put back together. All right, so now begins the arts and crafts section of this video. So this kit does helpfully include a paper template of the uh, cutouts that you need to make. Now, I've been told you can do this with hand tools, and I think, um, shoot, what's his name? Oh, why is it? Colin, um, forgetting the name of his channel, though. Makes super nice videos. He made a video on this kit a while back. I think he did this with hand tools. This does not compute. That's the name of his channel. But anyway, cut out that template. I think there's also like a 3D printable template that you can use. And okay, we need to pop this lens out. Rather than have to clean it later, I'm just gonna use this pot holder. Good lord. This does not want to come out. Holy crap. Okay. Set that 
down off to the side. I think I'm going to have to get new adhesive for this LCD, or for this lens. Seeing as how half of it came off. I'm surprised it's coming off so easily though, all things considered. Usually got to sit here and cleaning. Anyway, so that'll go in here. Let me set this aside before I totally ruin everything. And I've got a brand new blade. Sorry. I don't promise to never do that again. But I'm thinking if I just try and cut it through the paper, that should score the plastic, leaving me a nice template or a nice uh, line to cut from. Kind of veered off into the bushes there. That's okay, this is all under the lens, or it will be. Doesn't have to be perfect. Oops. And I'm gonna go straight across. You can see, left some lines for myself. What we want is that there. Oh, damn it, I cut my silicone mat. What I was hoping to avoid. Oh no, I didn't. <laughs> I just left a mark on it. Okay, cool. So what I would normally do, I think, is uh, cut this out on my Dremel, but it's, um, it's a bit late and I live in an apartment here, so I probably shouldn't do that. Thinking we can do this by hand, but you can see all the score lines I left for myself. Thinking, since I have a brand new blade in here, we should be able to just work our way through this. Just a few light passes to make sure the line is nice and deep. That's not going to work the way I want it to. Shoot. Okay. Got to keep going. And I'll come and get that little cut out later. I want to cut from this direction though. The reason I'm cutting or trying to cut top down is because I don't want the bottom of my blade to hit this part of the plastic up here. I'll leave a mark that you'll see. I'm 
there's a bit more clearance on the bottom. There we go. Now that I've got that started, it shouldn't be too much difficulty to get the whole thing, uh, except for that part that I started breaking earlier. Top part. There it goes. It wasn't breaking along the score line. All right. Just cleaning up my brakes here. Make sure it's nice and flat. Oh, that's probably why it wasn't breaking. I think that one actually might be a little bit too deep. That's okay. Okay, one more bit. We got to do this part, which I'm thinking, I'm trying to think of the easiest way to do this part. I think I'm going to score this part. This is not a good idea. Good work though. Okay, so kind of messed that up, but we're going to be okay because this is all under the lens. So I think I should be able to hide my crimes once I've got it all together. For reference, these white marks are something you definitely want to avoid, but if you're doing it with hand tools, that's probably not going to happen. That is, you're probably not going to be able to avoid that. 
Or at least I wasn't. Okay. Well, let's get this thing together. Enough fussing about. You know what? We should probably cut a little bit more. Holy crap, that's tight. Never mind, that's not coming out. <laughs> okay. Nice. Very nice. That's interesting. in there just a hair too deep okay yeah now we get we gotta do a little bit more trimming first specifically I want to trim around this area get mark that with Actually, I should cut this whole thing. That would have made more sense. Oh, shit. I accidentally cut through the uh, power switch. <laughs> oh, I hope I didn't just totally ruin this thing. That would be a bummer. Where's my knife? I was wondering why that didn't feel right. So much better. Just going to make sure all these wires are routed behind the screen instead of off to the side. But I think we're good to go to put it back together. weird feeling when the bit gets stuck. It's like you want to be annoyed because it slows you down screwing these things in. 
but at the same time you know you've chosen the right bit if it's if it's so tight that it gets stuck in the screw. All right, I had batteries. What did I do with the batteries here? There. Now, I have no idea if they're charged, but I do have batteries. Well, clearly they're charged. Where is my battery cover? There it is. I suppose that's what compressed air is good for. Slam that back down. And uh, let's try out my game here. And I just flashed. Let's see if it works. Oh, that's a bummer. It doesn't. Well, okay, that's that's a problem with the game, not the mod kit, though. Um, I'm going to clean up my workspace here just a little bit, let the camera cool down, and I'll be back and we'll do some uh, comparisons. All right, so practically an hour later, because apparently my phone's battery was completely dead. Um, let's put some kits side by side here. So on the left, I've got one of the... Uh, all-in-one kits. Uh, this is this one is completely drop-in. Uh, I didn't have to do any trimming. I'll throw a link for this kit down in the description below, but this is that Kiwi one that I did. And on the right here, we've got the Midwest Embedded kit. I'm gonna tweak the brightness down because it's really bright. Put my finger right on the sensor. Okay. So I've got both of these on Pokemon Silver here. Now on the left kit, there is this like vertical banding that I'm seeing. That's only on the camera, that's not in person. But it is, as far as I'm concerned, the uh, all in one kit is the gold standard for these transflective screen kits here. But I just like putting them side by side. You can see uh, you see how smooth or how not smooth this is. Uh, in this case, it's not dropping frames. It's just, I don't know, it's not smooth either. Like it's not, I don't see any tearing. And yeah, I don't see any dropped frames. It's just I don't know, kind of jittery. It's kind of hard to... Wow, that gets a lot brighter. But yeah, you can see the one on the left is perfectly smooth, and look at the right one, it's kind of jumpy and jittery. I don't, I don't know what it is. Um, oh, before I get these, before I start messing things around, you can see how much brighter this gets. This one's at max brightness. This one's at max brightness. No contest. Uh, let me uh, pop out my Pokemon Silver. Put the flash cart in here, and let me show you something here. Oh, I think I do want to back that up. I just adjusted the time on one of the two carts, and I don't remember which. Okay. Let's do... Where's my scrolling bars? There it is. Let's do this test. So this one is going to just show 
a constant pattern and every 256 frames or whatever it's going to do a screen reset so that's what this like white nonsense at the top it top is every few seconds like four seconds or so um no game boy handles this test well as far as oem screens whatsoever uh backlight kits, nothing. The screen resets, it's always gonna give an artifact on any screen. But what I wanted to look at this test in particular for is to see, you know, to really demonstrate how not smooth this is. It's it's kind of jittery, I don't know what it is. Um, I mean, it's really not that bad. It's just weird that this kit has this issue, whereas the McWill kit doesn't, or uh, well, yeah, even the McWill kit, but I, I meant the uh, all-in-one kit over here. Um, couple that with the uh, extraordinary power usage, and this thing is, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's not a great kit. There are some better choices. I'm, I still really like the, uh, the brightness bar. That's just so cool. I mean, it's, it's a little thing, but I like it. I think it's neat. Uh, but again, this kit was neat for its time. I think, I don't, I think in 2020 buying a Midwest embedded kit, unless they change something with this kit, I don't think it's, I think there are better kits to buy. Uh, but let's see. Let's try one more thing. Let's try Link's Awakening DX. So some of the other kits, namely the Game Boy Advance kits, have some issues with this in particular. This area. So you can still kind of see that like jittering, but I don't see any ghosting whatsoever. I don't see any flickering that isn't supposed to be there. Um, Honestly, it looks pretty good. Now, I haven't discussed this before, but see how his chain is like kind of flickering on and off constantly? That's that's on purpose. The thing is, is the original Game Boy Color screens did not handle ghosting very well. Uh, or at least the pixel response time was so low that flickering this chain on and off like this was a way to achieve transparency without having to make the actual sprites transparent which i don't know i don't know how uh programming for these games works so I, I i don't think that making those transparent was easy except for doing this workaround the problem is the pixel response time on these new screens is so much better that you can actually see it flickering instead of just being transparent and so that's why on all of the other screen kits you see it flickering. Um, it is by design. It's not an actual bug. But anyway, let me uh, pull this up here. Uh, there is one more thing I want to uh, want to discuss. Something really cool about this kit in particular. Take a look at this uh, all-in-one kit. You see how far back the screen is from the lens. Um, it's pretty par for the course for Game Boys, uh, really, but one thing the Midwest Embedded Kit does that I don't think any other kit except for the IPS kit for Game Boy Advance SP, only for SP, not the regular Game Boy Advance one, this one puts the screen right up against the lens, and it looks, it looks really good, to be honest. Um, couple that with just the colors of the screen which are also really good uh the brightness control honestly it's a really solid kit it's just <sighs> it's rough i mean i want to like it there was so much thought put into the assembly um <clears throat> to make it as easy as possible uh and to make it look as good as possible even the uh the brightness bar i, th I just think that's so cool it's cheesy, but whatever. I like it. Uh, I just have a hard time recommending it when you look at that that monstrous power consumption uh, compared to some of the other mods. 
this thing's gonna destroy your battery life. I think on the listing page it says like six hours or something like that. And for context, a Game Boy Color gets uh, 30 hours off the same set of batteries stock. Uh, and I think those all-in-one kit modded Game Boys get like minimum 15. So it's not, it's really not that great. But I do got to say with the, um, I did mention the uh, screen jittering issue. It's really not noticeable except for like when the screen scrolls across and it's not like I'm talking about it. I'm mentioning this issue, but it's not like deal breaking. I think, I think the biggest problem is still the battery life. I'm genuinely concerned, uh, using a flash card on this thing at max brightness. Now let's try it. Let's see what happens. Crank that bad boy up. Let's see how it works, huh? You can hear the noise the speaker's making. Well, it works. <laughs> 